Trevor, very much. Now to uh, Chris and Tate and uh, Gianna Caldwell and uh, on the front runners and what's going on right now. Um, it, let's talk first about what's happening on, on the Republican side and, and what looks like a pretty shallow agreement on the part of Ted Cruz uh, and John Kasich to, 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 to not mess in each other's supposedly strong turf. Uh, Kristen, um, they're not sticking to that. They're not sticking to it. Right. And the whole thing reeks of entrenchment. And in this election, it's really cool to be an outsider. So I don't think talk of this agreement is going to help either of those candidates in any way, especially when it comes to millennials. Um, if we're, if we're going to talk about millennial voters, millennials make up what could be the largest voting block in 2016. And Republicans really really have failed so far to make meaningful efforts to reach out to this huge group. Millennials don't care about trannies using the bathroom, they don't care about abortion, and they don't care about um, bakers making gay bake cakes for weddings. What they care about is prosperity, and Republicans have to find uplifting, positive ways to show millennials how their policies will bring them prosperity. Jenna, what do you think of that? I think that uh, people like Bernie Sanders just tapped into something which is a millennial issue, college. And what has to happen for the two front runners in order for them to uh, amplify a message in order for millennials to get behind is to talk about issues that impact millennials the most. And we haven't really seen that from either candidate. And Hillary Clinton has said, oh, Bernie Sanders' ideas are ridiculous and they're undoable. Well, you can't. I assume that you're going to get the support of his biggest uh, coalition, which is the Millennial Coalition, if you're saying the things that he's saying is uh, undoable and in some ways stupid. So I think in order for Donald Trump to really have a message as you know, Hillary and Donald to res resonate with millennials, they have to start talking about these issues and how they can provide some level of solutions versus none at all. You know, because I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, um, the last time a Republican won the youth vote it was Ronald Reagan, 1980, did it again in 1984. Every Republican presidential candidate since has lost it. What do they have to do to win it back? Well, if Republicans want to win the youth vote, they need to combat this message in the media that they're essentially the old cranky dad telling their teenage son no. Republicans have Why did a lot you of say, young lady? <laughs> Why did you just the Republicans say? have so much <laughs> negative jargon flying around all the time, and they need yeah. to work on spreading their message in a really positive way. I mean, it's pretty hilarious, actually, that a 74-year-old socialist is a rock star among the millennial generation. And you have this old man coming and telling young people who are depressed about a bad job market and in a lot of debt from student loans, hey, I want to give you free stuff and we're going to make the evil Mr. Burns people of the world pay for it all. I mean, to millennials it sounds great, but it provides a great opportunity for Republicans to push back and say, hey, our, our solutions will reward you for hard work. And this is why no, no, that's a good point, Jill. I have another, will, uh, but I have another theory on the appeal of Bernie Sanders, as I do Donald Trump. They're seen in the eyes of young people as mm -hmm. genuine articles. Now, we could argue that and all, but they, that they speak their mind, sometimes a bit bluntly, in, in Donald Trump's case, maybe crassly. But young people like that straightforwardness and directness. And I, I wonder if Hillary Clinton ends up being the nominee, she takes that for granted. She assumes that young people will vote for her, when in fact from Bernie Sanders, and we've seen with Donald Trump in cases where 20,000 Democrats switched to Republicans to vote for him, that maybe we're we're misunder uh, under, we're mis we're underestimating. That's the word. Uh, and, and you know what? His that's strength. A, what do you think of that? That that that's a very important point. And as Miss Tate was talking, I was thinking the exact same thing. The person who can capitalize on this the most is Donald Trump. Millennials like the keep it real attitude, let's be honest, and just be a straight talker. And I think Donald Trump does very, very well at that. Not only that, he has an economic populist message. Your jobs are being shipped over to here, here, and here. And so long as he can explain how that impacts millennials, no, I think most millennials would get behind his message. I don't think Hillary Clinton would be able to do the same thing because she comes off, and we've seen polls that suggest the same thing, she comes off as very inauthentic. And I think that, that rest assured, is going to be the the same in a general election. What do you think of that, Kristen? Can I'm you hear sorry. Me? Nope, you can't. I apologize. Uh, all right. Well, bottom line, bottom line uh, is I think the youth vote, like all the vote, is up for grabs. So don't ignore polls. 